Hey guys, welcome back. Orbaum here bringing you our very first of our live deck profiles for the Cosmic Eclipse set coming out this November. Hello, for those of you watching for the first time, I'm Orbaum. Nice to meet you. Welcome back. How are you guys doing? I am excited. This is probably my favorite deck to come out of Cosmic Eclipse. Probably. I mean, top five? Top three? Top one? I don't know. It's up there. <laughs> and I'm really excited to profile for you guys. Before you get into the video, don't forget to check out the match we had between this and Rushy Zek. Or, um, there's a lot of, you guys came up with a lot of names <laughs> for that card. Uh, Rushy Ram, Zek Ram, uh, Rushy Zek. Uh, Z God, there's a lot of them. There's some really silly ones too. I'll look in the comments later. So, um, and we'll get to check out that matchup if you want to see this deck in action. Also, don't forget to like the video. Let's get some likes. Let's get some supports on this video so I can continue to uploading. Because I'm like, this is not like usual where I can just like upload every day for a month. Just because I'm busy with school and work right now, I can only upload as long as I see support. So hit that like button if we can get to, uh, what's a good like number? Let's try, let's just go for like 40 likes. If we go to 40 likes, we'll do a, we'll do the Reshi Zek deck profile tomorrow. And don't forget to check out our sponsors at Guardian Gaming. And let me know in the comments down below, answer the comment question today, which is going to be the same for the next few videos. What do you guys want to see me play? Uh, what do you guys want to see me profile? All that good jazz. Let me know so I can start recording those games for you guys. So we're going to start going over this deck. We're going to start with three, Arceus Dialga, Palkia. Uh, you guys liked Space Dragons. Uh, I like, I, you guys did not like Space Dog as much. First of all, let me, let me reemphasize. Maybe it's better if I call this deck the Space Doges because these are all really, really good boys. Look at them. They're so cute. <laughs> They're all so cute. The Arceus Diagonal Pal get 280 HP with uh, three or three cost. For weakness to Fairy, which is kind of annoying because of Guardian, but we got all sorts of great, great things going on here. You do 150 damage and you can accelerate three energies from your deck to your Pokemon in any way you like. So it's got a, a Pikaram effect, but. It's yeah, it's like Pikaram except you can you can mix or match where you attach the energies. You don't have to be all to one Pokemon. And also we've got that GX attack for Metal Energy. You your attacks do 30 more damage for the rest of the game. All your all your attacks, all your Pokemon attacks, non GX Pokemon, GX Pokemon, tag team Pokemon, they all do 30 more damage to the active Pokemon for the rest of the game. And you have an extra Water Energy attached to it. Every time you take a prize, you take one extra prize, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> Which is this this GX attack is beyond absurd. So like if you take an if you take two the Dene knockouts, you win the game. If you take three non-GX knockouts, you win the game. If you take one tag team, one non-GX knockout, you win the game. If you take <laughs> if you take two non-GX knockouts and a GX knockout, you win the game. You guys can see what I mean, right? Like, this card is absurd. The fact that you hit 180 after your GX attack means you knock out the Denes, you knock out Blacephalons, you knock out a lot of stuff. You can deal with all non-GX Pokemon with this card alone. It's just overall a crazy, crazy card. That's why I want to build around it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not playing a Greens engine this time, although it does lean itself towards a Green engine. This time I'm playing it with... Keldeo. A uh, reason why is because we are playing water and metal in the deck. So it seems really it really seems pretty easy just throw in water or metal type attackers. I'm choosing to play Keldeo in here. Three of Keldeos here. Uh, being able to hit that 110 and hit past uh, any effects, which means you hit 140, which uh, is enough to knock out a Reshizard uh, after weakness. So that's pretty good on its own. Uh, and also, you got that great pure heart ability. It means you can't be damaged by or damaged or affected by any GX Pokemon, which is great. We don't use Resolute Blade, but I do want to mention that you're probably not going to use this secondary effect of your GX attack all the time. Sometimes you just need that first effect uh, just to make sure that you can win the game by taking two tag team knockouts just with Keldeo on its own. There's a lot of decks that can't play around the Keldeo unless they play Power Plant. And oh boy, do we have a card that can deal with Power Plant. <clears throat> Anything else I need to take about this card? I mean, now that you're hitting 140, you knock out most non-GX Pokemon. Uh, although, in most non-GX matchups, you will be attacking with just this card. You don't really want to have this down. It's too frail. And I am playing a 1-of Mega Low Punny Jigglypuff. It's just my way of doing big damage against some Pokemon. Um, you do have 240 HP with a 1 Retreat and a Fighting Weakness. So if you're playing against Guardian or something like that, and well, I mean, if you're playing against Guardian, you're probably playing against that, to be honest. But it's really good versus Pikaram. 
uh, because Pikaram can usually play around the Keldeo using some of their non-GX attackers, but against Pikaram, this thing does the this thing does the damage against abilities are and stuff like that, and maybe even like just a, decks that play a lot of the Denes, uh, like Mewtwo and stuff like that. Mewtwo box is really good because you do 60 damage plus 60 more damage for each GX in your opponent's side of the board, which can add up quite quickly. Think about Pikaram, like they play their Zero Auras, they play their Raichu Raichus, Pikaroms themselves. Like having just two Pikaroms down on the bench means that this attack does 180, and with a GX attack that means 210. 210 is a good number. If they have three GXs down, um, you're hitting, holy crap, <laughs> you're hitting 240. With the GX attack, you're hitting 270, which knocks out the majority of tag team Pokemon. You also have a GX attack. I think it just puts your opponent to sleep. I actually don't, I, I wish I could pull it up, but yeah, whatever. I'm going to have the information about the GX attack on, this, on the thing here for sure. I forgot what it does. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> Because I never, I just never use it. But that's going to be it for the Pokemon line. I will say, though, like, immediately, I don't think you really need this Mega Low Punny Jigglypuff. Um, there's a, I'm actually going to be talking about a lot of cards you like in versus what you don't like in this deck. Because I've been playing this deck for a while. I've played at least 10 games of this deck. And uh, this is my initial build. And there's quite a few things I do want to change. Uh, but that's going to require more testing. So we'll talk about it as it comes. No worries there. Anyways, let's talk about the items now. Four Poke Gears. And then four, Great Catcher. If you guys don't know what it does, discard two and pull up a GX Pokemon from your opponent's bench to their active. It's an item-based Lysander with a discard effect. Uh, <laughs> it's going to make a lot of tag team decks, or a lot of just GX decks in general, kind of risky. It now makes the Dene more like liable. Like Now when you play the Dene on the board, you have to be worried about this card. I will say playing four is probably overkill. Uh, you pro especially in this deck where you only need to knock out like a small number of GXs to win the game thanks to your GX tech. One thing I do want to try playing in this deck is some custom catchers instead of four of these, maybe like two of these and four custom catchers. Require a few cuts, but the custom catchers are good to deal with the non-GX Pokemon that can threaten your Caldeo. Uh, so you can pull those up. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can pull those up before they become a threat. As you saw in that matchup we had last time, Turtonator was a big threat to my Caldeo. If I could have knocked it out uh, at any moment. It would have made my matchup a lot easier. So I do like the idea of playing some custom catchers in here. But let's talk about some of the other cards. We got Tag Whistle. I'm not going to make a picture for this because all it is is search any two tag team cards out of your deck. This includes tag team supporters and tag team Pokemon. And yes, you search two out of your deck. This is, this is a good card. <laughs> it's a very, very good card. I am playing two Cherish Balls. Another card you can probably bump up to three. I personally only like two. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing through my deck by quite a bit, so I'm not super conflicted about only playing two uh, because I usually find my Keldeos anyways. Um, and not to mention that Tag Whistles finds your Megalopunny and your uh, Arceus Dialgas. So not a huge deal that I'm only playing two Cherish Balls. But if you want to be a little bit safer, you can increase it to three or four so you can find them easier so you can find your Keldeos right away. Um, so that's something that's worth considering. Two reset stamps, because in a lot of the games, especially when Keldeo is the main attacker, I start with the Arceus Dialga, and that thing gets knocked out after the GX attack, and then I kind of win the game with Keldeo. So you don't mind your opponent taking a knockout on Arceus Dialga, and then you can stamp them. So it's pretty handy. <coughs> uh, we got two energy switch, just to move your energies around. You can, make, you can play attack switch in here as well. I kind of want to play one attack switch, but for the time being, just two energy switches. Let's see if I can pull this up real quick. All right, cool, cool, cool. Because we have, I'm playing three switches for mobility um, and one Stealthy Hood. Stealthy Hood is really only there for matchups where you have to play two RC Dialga and you don't want one to be pulled up through like Ninetales or something like that. If you're playing against Ability Zard. I'm not too sure how Ninetales is going to be post once we have something like Great Catcher. But Ninetales is probably still a good card, especially for the Malamar matchup. So I imagine that's going to be a card that sees more play, which means I kind of want to make sure I have Stealthy Hood in the deck. But I'm really only playing Stealthy Hood because of a supporter that lets me search the Stealthy Hood. I'll go over that in a second. Well, that's going to be it for the items. And once again, cards that I could probably see cutting. I could see definitely cutting maybe one Tag Switch or Tag Whistle. If I want to remove the Guzma Hala, which I'll talk about in a second, I can remove the Stealthy Hood. And maybe one or two great catchers and that can make space for four. Oh, and also the mega low punny uh, jigglypuff although i'm still i'm still waiting i should play against some picaram just to see if i like it or some dark box or stuff like that just to see if that card is still worth keeping my big concern about it is that it's only 240 hp so it gets knocked out pretty easily but sometimes you don't really mind you know what i mean so that's my main concern but i mean i like the card i think the card's really good 
So we'll see. We'll, that's going to take some more testing. But there's only a few cards I want to drop here and there for some custom catchers. And the supporter line is the one I want to change the most. But the supporter line is really, really cool. I do like the supporters in this deck. Uh, I am playing for Cynthia. Oh, uh, Glare. Uh, let's just put it over here. All right, what's up, buddy? Uh, you know, the love, Cynthia. Three ends resolve. Discard the top six cards of your deck and attach any energies you find there to your benched dragon Pokemon. Uh, this is why I kind of want to play tax switch, but I play three switches, so I'm actually not too worried about it. And some energy switches as well. But attaching energies to your Arceus Dalga means that turn two, you can use your GX attack sometimes, which is not bad. You have 280 HP. It's actually really difficult for a lot of decks to take an Okoyu, bar like Reshizard. Reshizard is one of the few decks that can actually hit 300. But there's not a lot of decks that can hit 280, 300. Maybe Bocephalon, but Bocephalon matchup is so easy thanks to Caldeo, especially after your GX attack, um, that you don't really mind the Bocephalon matchup. Uh, what else is there? I mean, there's obviously Guardian, but then Caldeo just kind of stonewalls, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's crazy. Um, if you want to play some non-GX attack areas, you can probably squeeze in. Uh, and that's not really true. I mean, this is like Ends Resolve is just a good card. Like the whole thing is that if you want to attack turn one, if you're going second, you want to try to find your end resolve and you want to try to pull off the attack because even having one extra energy attachment is definitely not bad. Uh, my main concern is actually finding it. I'm only playing three because the card itself is kind of dead throughout the game. I've, I don't think I've, I've probably used it once in maybe 10 games, but that one time I used it was really, really good, which is why I play the three count. But the end resolve is pretty shaky still. Uh, there's other variants. There's like the Victini variant where you can attack with Victini early, but the problem with Victini is that it's a non-GX Pokemon, so it's a lot harder to find. You can't play Custom Catcher, things like that. So I kind of feel like the end resolve is a little bit safer. Um, but at the same time, you have to draw into the end resolve, but we do have Pokey Gear. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons why end resolve is good and bad. But just the ability to late, late game be able to pull out a... A Arceus Dalga Palkia with a Ends Resolve or mid to late game and then knock out a Dedene with it because your Keldeo can't knock out Dedene on its own. It only hits 140 after the GX attack. Um, it's pretty handy in its own right because that could actually just win games for you. That's how I've won the game before is that it comes down to clutch moments where I have to find the end Resolve. Not to mention, even if you don't play a super high count, you can find them late game thanks to some other of our some, some other tag team supporters. But real quick, I'm playing two builds analysis. You still play builds in here. Honestly, I could see yourself, I could see me cutting, uh, bumping myself up to three or four builds. I just like builds so much in this deck. I have something to keep in mind. And now for the tag team supporters, we are playing two Cynthia Caitlin. This is another card I want to bump up, or I want to play a coach trainer in here as well. Even like one coach trainer wouldn't even be that bad in this deck. Uh, this is where like this is where the testing I really want to get done is. I want to change up the supporter line completely, and I want to add maybe a few custom catchers. By changing up the supporter line and adding custom catchers, I definitely want to increase my Bills count and my Cynthia Caitlin or my um, coach trainer count. But I'm not playing any coach trainers right now. But Cynthia Caitlin is a really cool card. Uh, let's you. Put a supporter from your discard pile into your hand, which is already pretty good. You can re you can play this card to get yourself Ends Resolve or Bills Analysis back or one of the other tag team supporters. You can't get a Cynthia Caitlin back, though. Something to keep in mind. But if you discard one card from your hand, that's something you got to keep in mind. Because in the video, I definitely discarded two here and there. Because all the other tag team supporters, like pretty much all the other tag team supporters, except for ones that are not, that I don't think are being released. Actually, they probably will be released, to be honest. Um, yeah, honestly, they probably will. Um, like Lorelei... Ooh, that's going to be really cool. And Lorelei and Misty and stuff like that. And I think there's a Koga one as well. All those cards will be uh, will be like discard three. I think Lorelei is like discard five. But the other ones I'm playing are all discard two. So obviously it gets like tangled up in my brain when I can't read J Japanese. Japanese. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, discard one and draw three cards, which is why I like this card a lot better than Coach Trainer. The only problem I'm having with this card is that you have to have a supporter in your discard pile. So it's really hard to use turn one unless you... You can discard a supporter. So that's my main concern with this card, which is why I like the Coach Trainer in this deck as well. But I do like this card a lot. Just draw three is good. You don't have to have a tag team in the active, which is important because you're only going to have Arceus Dialga Palkia in the active a little bit in the game, just the early parts of the game, which is why I haven't played the Coach Trainer yet, which is why I like this card a little bit more. But you do have this. You have to have a supporter in your discard pile in order to draw the cards. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying. All right, cool. And you can't like discard a supporter because like the the way the card works is that the first effect is put a supporter from your discard pile into your hand. The second effect is discard a card and then draw three. So you have to go in the order of the effects with these with these tag team cards. 
So something to keep in mind. Another card that's really good that not a lot of people are talking about is Mallow Lana. This is just switch a card, which is already pretty good. You want to make sure you have mobility. And if you discard two cards from your hand, you may heal 120 Pokemon, 120 damage from the Pokemon you switched. So which means if your active Arceus Dialgapalkia has, uh, let's just say, 90 damage on it from a Reshi's Egg, you play this card, you fully heal yourself and switch to the bench, which is super good. Um, being able to get yourself out of range a lot of the time is incredibly strong for this deck. And I'm playing one Guzmahala. This is what I was talking about earlier. This is a card that lets you search a stadium card. And if you discard two cards from your hand, you may search a Pokemon tool and a special energy as well, which is insane. <laughs> it's, it's such a good search option. The thing is, I'm not super sure if I need this card in this deck. I'm playing the Stealthy Hood. The Stealthy Hood is kind of iffy right now. Um, so, which is, so the Stealthy Hood could probably go... I'm using this mainly for the Stadium Search and the fact that I can search a unit energy, which is another way to get an energy into your hand in case you can't draw into one. So also lets you search Viridian Forest in case you can't discard anything. So I do like this card, but it's pretty questionable if I really need it or not. So I'm going to be testing out a build. I'm going to be playing this deck in particular a lot over the next few weeks. I'm going to record different matchups with this deck as well. It's not going to be like new deck, new deck, new deck, new deck, new deck all the time. Sometimes I'm going to be playing this deck uh, repeatedly and other decks you guys want to see repeatedly. But this is a deck that I personally would like playing a lot. So I do want to try testing it a bunch. Um, which is why I'm interested in playing this bunch. But I'm probably going to play a bit variant that doesn't play this to see if I like it. But the ability to search one of my special energies, which is which can be a rainbow, which can be a unit. I think I might just play the rainbow instead of the unit. But my concern with the rainbow is that uh, it puts a damage counter on your Arceus Dialgopalkia. Usually you're using this to find a metal energy. You're not usually using this to find a water energy. Um, so, um, but unfortunately I was playing the wrong unit energy the whole time and I didn't realize it. <laughs> so in some games, like uh, I have to, well, you guys will see in a second, but in some games I was just like, oh, this is the wrong unit energy. I grabbed the water one instead of the middle one. So I told my friends, it's like, hey, just pretend like this is the middle one. <laughs> but um, what was I saying? Uh, the ability to search a unit, unit energy is really good. The ability to search your chaotic swell is really good uh, or chaos swell, I guess. This is just a good card, but it's, a not a necessary card. I like the Cynthia. The shuffle draw is really important in this deck. We're not playing a greens deck and being able to shuffle draw and find yourself tools, stadium, switches, stuff like that. I think it's really, really good. Guzmahala, I'm in the air about it. So let's go over the last cards. We got ourselves three Chaos Swell, which is why this deck is absolutely absurd, by the way. It's a stadium that means you can, if your opponent plays a stadium, if an, <clears throat> whoever the next person to play a stadium card down is, will have that stadium card discarded. So if this is on the board and your opponent plays power plant, both this and the power plant get discarded. And because of the only play one stadium a turn rule, they can't play down another stadium, which is really big. The only way to get around this is for players to play Marshadow into power plant. The problem with that is that decks like Guardian and decks that play power plant are usually playing green which means they can't afford to put in a Marshadow because they always run the risk of leading Marshadow and then getting donked because they can't play green. They have to just find another Pokemon off the raw, which is really difficult to do when you're playing a greens deck. So against almost every power plant deck, this card is ridiculous. <laughs> it is absurd, meaning your Keldeos are safe. Um, the only threats you have are decks that play Marshadow and then most Marshadow decks are most decks that play Marshadow are usually like um, Mewtwo box decks, and then they can't play Power Plant because they're Mewtwo box. You see what I'm saying? I'm also playing one Viridian Forest. That's another card that could probably go. Just having Cynthia is enough for me to find energies. I don't really feel like I need Viridian Forest. Not to mention, if I don't find it first, <laughs> if I play down my own Viridian Forest, it gets discarded as well. So I can't really take advantage of Viridian Forest as much as I would like, but I do like it for discarding a supporter so I can play Cynthia Caitlyn. So it's got, it's got its ups and downs, but there's a few cards that I can see myself getting rid of. Maybe I can play a fourth end resolve, uh, take out a Guzmahala, take out a forest, add a third bills. Um, there's a lot of cards I can t play around with, which is, what it, which is why I'm excited about uh, rebuilding this deck. And um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, right? <laughs> and of course, last but not least, this is a lot longer of a video than I was hoping it would be, but I did have a lot of explaining to do, uh, for sure. We have one unit energy. This is supposed to be the metal one, but I didn't, I couldn't find the metal one. All I had was a water one at the moment. So I have one of these unit energies. Uh, I am playing four 
eight waters, which I'm playing eight waters and I'm playing four metals. I'm playing eight waters because you, I don't know why I got it all weirdly organized like that. I thought I was only playing seven, that's why. Um, I'm playing eight waters and four metals. That is 12 energies, 13 energies if you count the unit. That is enough to find early game, which I do like. And uh, though I'm playing more waters because the Keldeo, obviously we're gonna be accelerating waters out of the deck more often. If we're gonna have, cause like most of the time, all your Pokemon are gonna have metal, water, water. Uh, maybe sometimes you will have two metals in Arceus Dagapalkia, but if you have metal, water, water, and metal, water, water, you only have, you can do it three times, essentially is what I'm trying to say. Um, so that's going to be the deck, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. The matchup spread for this deck is really good. All tag team decks are going to, all GX decks in general are going to have a hard time versus you. Even decks that like, even decks that can chip down your, even decks that can chip down your Keldeo with non-GX attackers, unless they can Oko it, you can use your supporter Mallow and Lana to switch between a Keldeo and another Keldeo. Right, and then full, and then usually heal it, out, put it outside of range, attack with the other Keldeo, and then you can get that Malolana back two times thanks to Cynthia and Caitlyn. So you can use a Malolana usually four times to like get yourself out of two KO range a lot of the time. Like think about decks like uh, Malamar, right? The a Giratina hits you, well, you heal 120 damage, so now you only have 10 damage on you, and then you go into another Keldeo or something that's... Or you can even do the same thing with Ar Arceus Dalgapalkia, right? Like, you can switch between an Arceus Dalgapalkia and a Keldeo and heal 120 every time you get hit by 30, which means you're only taking 10 damage really a turn. And then all you... And because of, like, how quickly you're taking prizes, you don't need to... You don't have to stall the whole game. You just gotta take three knockouts per game against non-GX Pokemon. So it's really, really, really strong. I do like this deck a lot. I think this deck has so much potential. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Don't forget to drop a like if you have not already subscribed to all the good jazz. Let me know. Let me know what decks you guys want to see me profile next. I can't wait to test this deck some more. Uh, we're gonna be... I think Dark Box is one that you guys have suggested a lot, so I'm probably gonna do Dark Box next. But well, let me know what you guys want to see it versus against. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.